I will invite Dr. Charles Mobita, lecturer from the Southern Party School, to come and take over. This is what we are here for. He's going to teach us a lot. The last time we had um, an induction was in 2019. And I think, uh, I, think I know that there are some, some people who have that induction. And, 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 and I, I'm sure they can testify that it was very informative. It was a very uh, insightful and learning experience. And um, Dr. Kabila is also very um, knowledgeable. He's, 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 he's a man rich with knowledge. So while we're still having him on earth, let us enjoy him and use him and gain understanding from him. So, Mr. Dr. Mobita, I'd like to invite you up. Thank you. First thing I need to know um, is from all of you. Who looked in a mirror this morning? Who <laughs> looked in the mirror? Who looked in the mirror? You didn't look in the mirror. You did. Now, when you looked in the mirror, you saw your own reflection, isn't it? Imagine if you look in the mirror and you see a different reflection. What will happen? You run away, you start thinking, maybe I'm going mad, maybe you know, something terrible is going on. Right? Now, the sober part constitution, rules and procedures, code of conduct, sober party political program is your mirror. It's your mirror. If you pick up that and you don't see yourself in there, then you are in the wrong place altogether. How many of you here belong to UDF? <laughs> you are pretending, yeah? You are pretending. Not too long ago, Chief, not too long ago, you we were singing the anthem. And I hope you looked properly. Apart from one gentleman at the back there, one comrade there, that was with my The only one that I said, yeah, that, that is a member. The rest were you dear. <laughs> <laughs> the rest were you dear. Now, if your own side, you don't even know your own side, imagine you buy a bottle of Coca-Cola. What is the intention? You want to drink Coca-Cola. But immediately you start testing, you, you test on vegan. You say, well, this is wrongly put. We have something in your own place. <laughs> so, how many of you went like this? Two men. Two men of you. Now, I'll show you this. See? The insignia of the Sopo Party is this. Not this. So don't dilute it. Never dilute it. So the first thing that I need to say today is. The Swapo Party is a rules based organization. It is a rules based organization. It is based on rules. Therefore, therefore, the Central Committee, Politburo, all other individual members, Affiliate members should adhere to the rules. You have been elected in your various organs. You become the exemplary members of this organization. People need to look at you and see the rules. The behaviors, the conduct, the pronouncement of every member of the party should reflect, should reflect the rules and procedures, the constitution of the soccer party. Today I'm going to talk to you about uh, maybe four things. First of all, we will have to look at the uh, the principles of the party. 
Then we will look at the core values. What are those core values? Then we will look at um, the characteristics, the traits that make you to become better leaders of the party. The traits that we need to acquire to become better leaders of the party. And then we will look at how do we transform your current mindset to a mindset that will enable you to lead the party. And finally, we'll give you a little bit of skills on how to think. I know you know how to think. I know you know how to think. But you think you know. You don't. I'll give you one. And I'm not going to read it. I'll ask the ambassador to read it for you. It's not written in the house of me. This is from the code of conduct of the swap of life. And I want you to read it after reading it. Please try by all means to translate it in Botswana. I believe the majority of us understand that. I'll try to translate it in Bamara. <laughs> <laughs> This is Code of Conduct 16.8. Swap of Art Code of Conduct 16.8. You have it. Okay. Now, you start from 16 itself. You just read that part and then read 16. 16 says the rest of the things of misconduct is equal to the 16.8. Okay, so. A member shall be guilty of misconduct if he or she gets, collects, or raises funds for campaigning activities within the party aimed at influencing the outcome of the conference, meeting, or election. Merona, please just. Sorry. Sorry. Okay, just think. A member shall be guilty of misconduct if he or she gives, collects, or raises funds for campaigning activities within the party. In that influence the outcome of the conference, meeting, or election. So I want to dedicate to Mirana to translate for us. What is the <laughs> Let us do it slowly. A member of the party is guilty of misconduct. Okay? A member of the party is guilty of misconduct if he or she gives, collects, raises funds for the purposes of influencing and the outcome of an event. How many of you attended bribes? How many of you? How many of you have worn t-shirts? With Charles Mubita's face on <laughs> before the elections. <laughs> before the elections. Huh? All right. So you're guilty. You are guilty. I'm not the one saying so. The Code of Conduct says so. So that's the first thing we need to understand. Let us understand our rules and practice our rules if we are for members. Because the life of a SOCO member should be exemplary. Okay? Don't pretend. Don't pretend. Alright, that is for you to reflect. I think later on you might think about it. There are a number of them 
that I, I, I will give you later on, and you might think, why didn't I read this? You cannot, you cannot be yourself and you don't even know how you look like. Um, now the principles of the soccer party, this time for you, they include the motto of the party. The motto of the party is solidarity, freedom, and justice. And then the principles, you add progress and democracy. Correct? I didn't say so. I said you need to understand that. I'm not saying. How did that teacher come about? It was taken by someone. By Swapo or by someone? By someone. Okay. So funds were raised. Funds were collected. And what's the purpose of that t shirt? To influence the influence outside the face of someone. Thank you. Now you are contesting against me. I don't have I have zero balance in my bank account. You have uh, triple, triple, triple figures in your in your account. I cannot afford to print a, a t-shirt, but I'm also contesting for the same position that you are contesting for. What should Swapo Party members look at? Should they look at how well you dress, how articulate you are, or they should look at your capability? Right? Now, what that thing says is that you are guilty if you are going to be selling these t-shirts in order to get money so that you have a bribe to promote a particular individual. You're guilty. You're guilty. And once you're guilty, you are not worthy of being a support party member. You go before a disciplinary committee. And that code of conduct will be used against you. And this is the one thing that we. It's unfortunate today we have very well behaved people here, uh, very well dressed people. But you will see many uh, t shirts and many dresses and all that. They don't conform to simple colors of the party. They don't. Why? Because we allow every other person to print, to, to, to tailor make, to do whatever they want to do. There's no control. There's no control. There is no control. Coca-Cola's colors, the way they look like, the way they are shaped, have been there since time immemorial. But they don't change it. They don't change it. If they say it goes this way, it has to go that way. Not this way. Right? Now, you need, as a member, you need to be proud of your own identity. The social party colors are your identity. Those are who you are. You cannot change that. If you change that, then you want something else. The only thing we had to change, we had no choice to change, was the, the incident. Because we didn't want to go to court. There was no time to go to court to fight for Onyeka. You know Onyeka? That, uh, yeah. That was our incident before independence. But it was something that was taken by Shikanga, he claimed to have intellectual rights over him. Because in 1978, when he was assigned by the party as secretary for information at the time to design things, he went to the Nordic countries and they managed to design that project. So when he left, Later that year, he felt this was his own intellectual property, so he was using it. Otherwise, we were going to have two similar things at the elections. That's why we actually came up with that. Now, I hope we understand 
Those simple principles are very simple. Solidarity. Okay? United in things that we wish to have. Okay? Compassionate for others. Okay? Freedom. Free to choose. Free to say anything, to raise your own opinions. Justice. Fairness. No discrimination. Treat everybody the same. Right? Democracy. And this is what we talk about. Inner party democracy will still come to that. There is democracy in the party. Progress. We need to have self uh, uh, um, efficient delivery of services so that we can progress in the country. Right? Now, the five, five core values, these are the values of the party. Five of them. Values of the party. Five. Number one is elected leadership. Elected leadership. Every position in the party should be acquired through an election. In the party constitution, the rules and procedures simply state every election in the party should be by secret ballot. Should be by secret ballot. So every position is elected. Nobody should be appointed. You know, we make a very serious mistake in our party sometimes because sometimes we forget. You know, I'm quite sure you've seen um, when you are elected to the Central Committee, you are elected by a Congress, the Central Committee. And the Constitution says for you to get into the Politburo, you should be an elected member of the Central Committee. Right? So only elected members of the Senate, not those that are appointed. <laughs> and then you have two categories, three, sorry, three categories of social party membership. Right? You have individual membership, that's you and me. We individually apply, we are accepted, things like that. Perhaps. You have affiliate membership. With the present for students, organizations, the labor movements, and others. Okay? And then you have permanent members. People like uh, uh, Vini and Dalton, people like, uh, you know, our elders. That's permanent membership. But how do we make a mistake that when a, 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 a permanent member is not elected to be a permanent member. It's accorded to that because of the respect that we give to the person. But if when that person dies, you cannot replace that person. You don't replace that person with somebody else. And whereas we, we actually go a step further, we replace that person with somebody who, is, who does not deserve to be a permanent member, with somebody as young as me, uh, I don't qualify. So it's elected membership. Number two, collective responsibility. Collective responsibility. When the we look east, this. Executive takes a decision. That decision is binding on the collective. You don't jump out from there and say, uh, 
But I, I now outside the meeting, we are saying, you know, I, I disagree with this. It is binding. It's for both of you, all of you, all of you. You have it. It's binding with you. It's collective decision. <coughs> However, it's not collective decision if uh, Comrade Sergius Onona goes to somebody and says, uh, Comrade, goes to Comrade Wife, huh? goes to Comrade Wife and says, Comrade Wife, um, we have a big problem. No, rather, I have a big problem. And the Comrade Wife says, no, we are married. In our marriage, there's nothing like I have a problem. It's we have a problem. So just tell me what the problem is, because we share our problems. And then uh, Comrade uh, Olona says, uh, okay, good, we have a problem. And the problem is that we implemented a school girl. Uh, and Comrade Wife will say, but that <laughs> is not collective. Yeah? So don't go and mess up things. <laughs> And then, in the name of the party, try to hide because you've got a particular leadership position in the party and you think you are qualified to use the collective excuse. No. And unfortunately, the party is being used wrongly in that way. In that way. By ourselves. By ourselves. Okay, the third core value is consultation. Consultation. The reason why you find the district executive in the regional executive, the reason why you find the branch executive in the district structure, why you find the section in the branch structure, is all a, a chain of coordination and consultation. The chain of coordination and consultation. So we consult from root base going upward. Everything that is done in the party is done through <coughs> consultation. Or oh, it should be done through consultation if it is not. So that every other layer knows what is happening. Right? Principle number four, <coughs> criticism and self-criticism. Core value number four, criticism and self-criticism. People used to think that the late um, KK was not normal up here. Yes, he took it a little bit far, but he was blaming, he was criticized. There's a big difference between blaming and criticizing. The criticism that is a core value of the soccer party is constructive criticism. Is constructive criticism. You criticize while offering a solution. You say, instead of doing this, let us do this. But you don't just blame and leave there and then you even yourself don't even know what, what you're doing. You think you've done something better. You haven't. Alright? Now, the last core value, which I think is the most important, is the most important in the process, of becoming a leader <coughs> is democratic centralism. Democratic centralism slash inner party democracy. <coughs> inner party democracy. Now, democratic centralism basically is about the decisions of the higher structures bind on the lower structures. <clears throat> the decisions of Congress bind on everybody else. 
the decisions of the district banks on the branch and the section. Correct? However, the return of uh, inner party democracy, which is the key, the key election process of the Swapo Party. Inner party democracy basically means that every vote is secret. Now, secret not only in the sense of when you get to the ballot and you do this, but secret in the sense when you do your campaign. When you do your campaign. Right? Now, let's say <coughs> one, two, three. These three comments, these three comments are Fight for the position of district coordinator. So, they stand up here and they say, I want to be a district coordinator, I want to be a district coordinator, I want to be a district coordinator. Now, we all know. And then let's say the four comrades decide you start campaigning for this one. You go door to door, you have t-shirts or hair, you are campaigning for this one. And this group here is campaigning for him. And this group is campaigning for, for him. Open, open, open. So at the end then, this group knows that that group is campaigning for that one. And we are campaigning for this one. At the end, he wins. When he wins, he knows these are the people that campaigned for me. Those ones were against me. Those ones were against me. What would be the relationship between him and the ones who are campaigning against him? What would be the relationship? No. Not a good relationship. Right? Not a good relationship. What would be the relationship between him and her and her? Not a good relationship. Right? Now, that is why the party, in its constitution and rules and procedure, emphasizes secrecy in the vote. So that when she wins, she should not know who voted for me. She should simply believe all the other comrades voted for me. I got 70%, but I don't know who the 30% are. You don't know. So you end up treating everybody the same. But I, that brings unity. That brings unity. <coughs> and that is what we need to do. Right? That's what we need to do. So, sorry. Oh, no, <laughs> Yes. Um, I, I understand the rationale of the statement, um, but if I hear what you say, the campaigning, the division in the campaigning creates animosity between the party members, but the voting is secret. So are we saying we should no longer promote campaigning? Because that's where the separation comes in. Uh, you know, I think the question sounds very great. Sounds very great. But I think the question that you need to ask yourself is where in the Constitution, where in the rules and procedures is campaigning provided? Where? You can read that Constitution from page one to the last. Read the rules and procedures from beginning to end. You will not find a provision where campaigning is put. But this is how you do your campaign. It's not there. And the reason it's not there is because it's, it's we've moved Sopo from Sopo to Sopo to Sopo to Namibia to Sopo party. A lot of things in, in the process have, have gone missing. What is supposed to happen is, oh my God, 
You are nominated in your, in your district. We want you to become the regional coordinator of the commerce region. So, from the branch where you belong to, they've nominated you. You go to the branch conference for voting. The branch conference is not held outside there. The branch conference happens once. It is in here. So the, 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 the sections that have nominated you go to that branch conference knowing that this is our, our candidate. When you are in that conference, you are given the opportunity in the conference. Your campaign is with the people that are voting. Unfortunately, these days our campaign is in the new place. And 9 out of 10, the main people, 90% of the people that fuel up, promote certain candidates are not even proper members. In the news, they're not. They're not. They're trying to distract you. So traditionally what used to happen is, you'll have this district conference. At this district conference, uh, vacancies are declared. Uh, no victims. Now it's time to vote. And we are voting for that comrade, that comrade, and that comrade for this position. So each comrade then is asked to come here and motivate, say why they need to be voted. Two or three people that nominated you and seconded you come and motivate. You do that. Right? You do that. And that's how we almost lost the plot in 2004, extraordinary conference. The campaign was taken to the newspapers and everywhere else. But when we went to the extraordinary conference to vote, everybody was given the chance now to campaign at the conference. Within, you see, you are then, you are motivating why this conference is better than the other conference. So, you need to look at that provision. It's not in the Constitution that allows us to go and go to go campaign. Yes, you can, you can seek support and all that. But campaigning for this person and the expense of the other person, uh, it means to the problem that we, we have when we campaign. Go to Code of Conduct. Code of Conduct. Um, Sixty-seven point six. Sixty-seven point six. One of the things we are not expected to do as party members. We are not supposed to humiliate another party member or embarrass him or her in public. Right? Humiliate another member or embarrass him or her in public. So those are the things that we need to be careful when we are having this campaign. It is nice to, to buy for, for a position. Yes. Uh, I want this meeting. Uh, I want you to campaign for me to the next secretary. Okay. Now the first question you ask me is, okay, what's wrong with the, the, the one that you did? That's the first thing you are going to ask. So what, I'm going to, what am I going to say? Huh? I'll start scanning. <laughs> start saying all the bad things about it. That's not right. That's not right. You, as my comrade, are expected to build me up. If you see I am letting somebody build me up, don't bring me down. Don't embarrass me. But when we come to the floor, and I said, now I want to stand as a chief, 
because I think I can deliver this, deliver this, deal with the issues, not with the person that you are campaigning against. That's our problem. That's our problem. Alright, let's move to the next uh, issue, which is now the character that you need to become a better leader. You have to be And it does not matter whether it's at the section level of branch, district, regional, or nation. There are four, four skills, four skills that you need. Four skills. The first one is humility. Humility. You need to be humble. You need to be humble. Not humble before him and you go kneeling down and go. No. Humble. Before this, before this, you kneel down before this and promise to be able to execute this from page one up to the last page. Humility. You need to accept that you are a servant of the party. You are not the master. You are not. Those who elected you did not elect you to become the master. They elected you to lead them. They elected you because they saw some quality in you and you need to be humble before this constitution. Number two, teachability. Teachability. Teach. Teach. Teach ability. You should be able, at your own time, to teach yourself to understand the legal frameworks of the Swapo Party, to understand the party itself. To understand the members of the Swapo Party. Remember, right from the beginning, we said the Swapo Party is a rules based organization. It's based on rules. So, your behavior, your conduct, your pronouncements should conform, should conform. To the legal requirements, should conform to the constitution, should conform to a number of other things. And do something else. And we are guilty of this. I feel it for you something. Um, Membership. Article 5, subsection 5 of this constitution. It says, unless it is a requirement of this constitution, no member 
no member shall hold multiple positions. No member shall hold multiple positions in the organs of the party. You have been elected to be in the district executive and you are also uh, the secretary of uh, finance of the Soko Party Women Council and you are also the uh, <laughs> <laughs> you are a councillor in the Windhoek, you know, set there by Swap. You know, a councillor in the Windhoek municipality, and you don't see anything wrong with it. You don't. You don't see anything wrong with it. Basically, it means you don't know the party. You don't know. You need to sit and teach yourself the party. You need to teach yourself the party. Because if you don't know the party rules, then you don't know yourself. Why are you here? Why are you here? Teachability. It is very, very important. That's why we need to have this type of workshop in our branches, in our sections, in our districts. Now and then, let us Compare it. Let us discuss these things. Learn from each other. Learn from each other. Number three, curiosity. Curiosity. How are you? So good. Are you sure? Sure. How many times do you go to the top of offices, your own district offices, or branch offices, and uh, comrades come to you and say, Hi, how are you? Fine, and how are you? Sometimes by the time you go home, you don't even know how many people greeted you. You don't know. Because it has just become... It's just a habit. Hi, hi, hi. You don't have the time to investigate, to find out where they live. How many times have you said, I'm fine? But then you go to the corner and start crying because you received that message. But you're telling people you're fine. You're on your way to hospital. You're saying you're fine. We are too fast. You get to your office, you sit in the office, now you see your colleague is not in the office. It's 10 o'clock, still not in the office. 12 o'clock, still not in the office. Following day, not in the office, you rush to your computer. Da, 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 da. Okay. Final warning, or first warning. Yeah. Four days later, you give a, a warning letter. But you didn't even try to find out. You didn't even try to find out. Have you asked amongst you here? I know uh, we are all supposed to be working. But I will tell you, I need to know whether there is electricity in your house, whether there is water in your house. You are my comrade. You are my comrade. You're not my brother or my sister or anything. You're my comrade. Did you eat breakfast this morning? I need to know that. Look, Swapo is not any other organization but 
Mitterrand. No, it's not. When you use the word comrade, it means something else. It means something else. It's not friendship. <laughs> what we do here is friendship. It's not, it's not comradeship, it's friendship. We have just become friends. We meet here, but we don't know each other. We don't know each other. And yet we say, oh, we are coming. Right now, when we leave from here, we are all rushing to our cars. All rushing to our cars. You don't even know how I came. Then I am looking at Congo this one, which is from this very beautiful car. And I'm saying, Congo, then you may lift to, uh, to town. And he'll be pointing in the opposite direction. Oh, I'm going this way. Oh, okay. I start walking all the way up to the to main road. But I also see this cut me going. And we do that. We do that. How many times have you left your comrades and you are driving to the village? <laughs> huh? We do that. We are never that curious anymore. We are never that curious to understand the circumstances of our own country. We are not. We are not. But as leaders, as leaders, you need to understand these are not your friends. They are not your family. These are your comrades. For those who are the, you know, the, the other side of the struggle, you would understand. That even if you are the one who stumbled on this little small rice here, and you know there are ten others, you will make sure that each one at least takes half a spoon. Each one at least takes half a spoon. If you can take half a spoon, let others also take half a spoon. But here what we do? We hide. We hide. After eating... <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Now that's the problem. The last, the last number four. Intentionality. Intentionality. Intention. The intention. Intentionality. Now I want four comments here to answer me. Volunteer to answer me simple question. Why did you join SWAP? Very simple question. Can I have four volunteers to answer me that? Yes. Why I joined SWAP is I was not born into the party. <laughs> you weren't born into the party. <laughs> Thank you. Chief, why did you join Swap? Um, okay, on my side, I was okay, I grew up in, in, the, in the house, so, but it's not really what is what I'm doing as so. well. I just feel like as you we are not speaking in the in the project mm -hmm. to me so we, when I look at all the party and I can only see so many parties that they can able to carry the country forward. I want to understand the politics of the party and how it actually works. Uh -huh. you, do you hear what your district coordinator needs to know what you're saying? Can you speak up? Uh, the reason why I joined was partially because of my parents. They are part of Swapu. I grew up in the household, like the gentleman pointed out. But I also just wanted to understand Swapu as a party, how it works, how, because sometimes when someone looks at the party from the outside, you don't quite understand what's happening behind the background. Just get the end result. Okay. 
You see, the intention, the intention is very important. But I will tell you, unfortunately, all of you that have given the answers, I'm sorry to say I will give you zero. I will give you 0 0.5. But zero zero zero. At other at other workshops, at other workshops, some people would say I joined Swafo because um, I saw people being killed by the South Africans. Others said I joined Swafo because my uncle was imprisoned by the South Africans. Another said, you know, a number of reasons that are given. But until you understand, sit in a corner and ask yourself a brutal question, why am I in front? Until you are able to answer that question, you cannot be honest with yourself. You're not. And this is the problem. It starts from the section all the way up. Even if you are going to ask people in the Congress, those who are, who are going to send to the Congress, 90 or 99 percent of them will be answered in the same way. Because my parents went into exile, because my whatever went, maybe somebody even said, uh, you know, uh, it was the day when I went to, 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 to uh, a rally addressed by some new and uh, then I went. Mm -hmm. yes. You see, today you find, uh, unfortunately, I think you always see uh, traditional chiefs. Huh? A traditional chief is going to the medicine appointment with the regional coordinator. I'm coming there with 50 of my subjects. 50 of my subjects. You go to the regional coordinator's office and you say, I am a chief, I am a memoir, whatever, uh, I want to join SOPO and my subjects also join me. They don't know anything about what. But what you do? You call a press conference, you call all the media, they come, the, the hundred people have joined Swapo. You are lying to yourself. You give those people cards. <coughs> when that chief dies, and you go to them and say, hey, are you a Swapo member? say, no, we are taken there by the chief. <laughs> I don't even know what you're talking about. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So the intention is very important. The intention is very important. Just imagine now, if I were to ask you the same question, to say, I want you to join the Brave Warriors, can you get into the Brave Warriors? You say, yeah, but uh, my next used to be a very good friend of my father, so I'm going to the Brave Warriors. Okay. What are you going to do in the Brave Warriors? You've never kicked a ball in your life. And you want to be a member of the Brave Warriors? It doesn't work. Okay. Then, if joining Swapo does not mean, it does be clear, if it does not mean that you join in order to contribute, in order to contribute your time, your strength to the growth, to the strengthening of the Swapo party, then you are in the wrong place. You are in the wrong place. Because Swapo is built by bricks. You should be a brick that aids on other bricks in order to build. You should not just come there as a mosquito and you are on next to the, the brick. If the brick falls, you fly away. Okay? What mosquitoes do? 
Now you join because both your parents are, are SOPO members. When they leave SOPO, what happens to you? You also leave. They join another organization. What happens to you? You also leave. Someone says, I joined SOPO because uh, the ideology uh, appealed to me. Which ideology? Which ideology? When the first constitution came into being, crafted in 1969, then changed in 1976, changed again in 1983, changed in 1991, changed in 1998, huh? changed in 2013, changed again now, 2018, which ideology of this? Are you going to jump out because now socialism was removed in 1991? That was the ideology. And it was removed. So if you're going to be following this, you are joined because you, are, you want to be part of the team that has to build. Your focus is on building the part, not on benefiting from the part, but the party should benefit from you. The party should benefit from you. And the only benefit that the party should get is you helping the party to grow. So that's why you find the majority of people today, they don't really care whether the party is destroyed or they don't really care. They don't really, they, they don't really care. Okay. Right, any questions on the, the traits that you need to become a leader in the social party? Yes. We want to ask, apart from this session, are we going to have, huh? are we going to have apart from, apart from this uh, session, are we going to have training workshops on character transformations in order to become the required leaders of the uh, That is something you check, you check up with, with him. Uh, we are open for training if you choose what particular area of training you need to be trained in, either intersection or ground or whatever, but that's something we need to discuss with the leadership. We are open for that at any given time. But the most important thing in the party is to grow. To grow with the times, to grow the party, that you should be proud of. The reason you always look in the mirror is because you want to be proud of yourself when you, when you step out. So the same thing, you should be proud of the swapper that you see. Okay. And if there's a people somewhere try to scrape it off. All right. Maybe Dr. Oscar. Are we doing danger now or do we have to wait for the station? No, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, no, you can, you can. It's better when you interact. It's a lot much better than wait until the end. Um, I have a question on the membership. So you said the member should hold, should no member should hold multiple positions in the party. Um, for example, now in our in our district, uh, it can be maybe you are a member, a, 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 a chairperson of the section. <laughs> Party exercise, and then again you are a section leader of the Swapo Elders Council. 
and he died in the, the women council position. So uh, uh, when he said no membership hold multiple positions in the party, do you mean that? What do you mean? And uh, because, yeah. for example, now you find yourself in in the section, for example, some people are not there. You are the only one there, or whatever. You took all those positions. Is that wrong? Uh, okay, first. Let's, let's go. Okay. Because mine is not, it's also more the same. Just to elaborate uh, how our branches are. The structure is like that because some of us we don't want to see our party die in the area of the earth. I, we might be only 10, but we meet all those criteria. I'm a woman. I want a, a branch of women at, at my, uh, my area. I'm an elder. I want the Swapo elders councils to be in my area. Okay, you so um, I have a background. That one, I made sure that my kids at home. Still, I'm the organizer because as far as they are telling you, they are Swapo members because they were born in a house of Swapo parents. It's true. You cannot stay in my house and uh, you think you can do <laughs> UDF uh, in my house. You wait until you have your own house. <laughs> to UDF by yourself. <laughs> so I made sure in my area there is a branch for the youth. Now for the party, I'm the mobilizer. And now the constitution is telling us. I, I, I was expecting for the constitution to say I shouldn't be the chairperson and the information in the party. I shouldn't be the coordinator and information in the Swapo Women Council. I shouldn't be the, uh, the chairperson, and at the, the same time I'm a, a mobilizer of the Elders Council. But if we are promoting it to break nicely and let the party die, let us have some of these clauses in our constitution. Because here in this area, we really know the dynamic of the area where we are living in. Colleagues, we are few here. Do we have to kill, if we are killing sections, equally we are not going to have a branch. If we don't have branch, we are not going to have a district. If we are to go to, with this uh, process that we, we, we put to in, the, in the Constitution. And the other thing, we put things as, 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 as procedures and rules, because those things, they only benefit somebody. We, it, it's only benefit somebody. We, we, we don't think for the party yet, how I see and reading some of these procedures. To me, these procedures, they are put there cosmetically because they suit that situation at that moment. What about tomorrow, when we are no longer there? So we mean now, if we are few, we cannot carry the name of the party ahead because I cannot have those multiple things. And some of the people who are even living there around us, the moment I have a position up there, I don't mind it with the swapo thing, and I'm living because of the ticket of the swapo. They don't come to the meeting. Where are we? We are not here. Maybe because it was put to that clause that if I'm a minister, I shouldn't have a position in the section. It was put to, to suit that one. And they have to belong to the section. And this thing.
doesn't have a section, doesn't have a branch. You don't know how they pass the word there to, to, to become a, a central committee. They are hanging and they don't have structure down here. So please let us look at those things. Okay. Good. Yeah, first of all, it's not me saying that. Huh? The Constitution. <laughs> 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 but uh, on what you are saying, both of you. Oh, no, I don't want to get into this. Oh, I want to get into this. Oh, please. Okay. Yeah. But we are going to be provocative. <laughs> because I think there are reasons why we are here discussing what we are discussing. And in my diagnosis, it begins to indicate that Swapo is, a, Swapo is dying. And I want somebody to challenge me on that. And I have my reasons why I say that. Um, if you look at the issues we are addressing, they, they are beginning to look trivial. And we are, in a way, becoming myopic by being drawn to small issues in the greater scheme of things. An organization, in my view, should be there for the benefit of common good, to create a critical mass so you can have the best of what it is that you are competing for. What is SWAPO supposed to do? It should be a big, broad home in which we coexist so we can politically compete to create the environment that guarantees us dignified life amongst other things. Right? Now, in your presentation, you touched on, on a few critical things, like the reasons why we, we take part in, in, in this political discourse. Uh, my young brothers here, most of them, and you said it, we fail. We're talking about because our parents, because we are born into it. And you, in my view, you touched on it very well in your response. But those are the key questions. Can you really exist in something just because you were born in it? Fine, if it's your choice. But then don't expect any other thing than the affinity to it because you were born into it. Now, going further, we talked about uh, things like structures. How do we actually, actually need structures, or do we need to produce our leadership through these structures? Are there any inhibiting constraints in those processes? In my view, yes. Because that begins to speak to how you campaign, who you campaign with, and what you campaign for. There's no more the organization is bigger than the individual. It leads to, because of the, the way you are constrained, it, it may have been okay when you guys came from Hexa to have structures from the sections because you wanted to sanitize yourself from ground up. What is wrong today if we adopt a culture or a system of universal suffrage where any bona fide swap member is invited to go and register for eligibility and whoever stands or wants to stand for swap leadership goes out there and articulates why they want to be elected so that you are campaigning on the basis of substance and not factionalism because the factional element is blessed together so that when I am in there, I control the opportunities, and then you, you gain. For me, these are the serious issues that we need to be bogged down on. Think tank. Let's select think tank thinking. When we select this think tank, we must be thinking. Yes. <laughs> it's true, because it's chummy, chummy, booty, booty. I was also on that list. Oh. And nobody else, I was on that list, I was just kicked off because I'm seen to be uh, something else. But was I consulted to say, Desmond, we want you to be a part of this thing thing. Because there's also, there's one thing of you thinking what I'm capable of. There's also the other, whether I am confident enough to dispose those competencies. So I, I, I wanted to say that maybe the help influence the discussion and the debate so we can begin to talk about serious things and the things that is helping us to become and remain competitive. Yeah. So that we can compete politically with other political parties, create this home that, 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 is the, um, that, that responds to all our dreams and aspirations. Yeah. Because the Constitution guarantees us.
I, I, I want to pack the, I have several views, I mean interventions, but I, I'd like, I, I thought those can be enough to provoke others to. Thank you very much. Um, you see, all the issues that you put up are very bad. Is there any uh, uh, time when they come together to meet? It's not. Here, as I think then, you come up with the manifesto of the party. All right? Come on. Now, you look at the manifesto of the party, which is done, let's say, uh, 2017. Okay, 2017 to 2022, the election manifest. On the other side, on the dual tank, they come up with national development plans. <laughs> with national development plans, which is start from 2019 to 2024. You understand? There's an overlap already. It's an overlap. That already is a sign of you are basically wasting your time because you are not in correlation, whatever you're doing, it's not it. So, I hear what you're saying, brother, I understand that. But I have to work on this. Yes, we have serious problems. But when you take this for the room, the way in that thing they frame it, when you point out the things that you tell them, let us, let there be a cohesion. Without cohesion, you can never move any but some of this has got to be tied to the thing otherwise. But let's address some of the things. First, what came from there? I want the district coordinator to read from the theme of the section. Go to the section. Go to the section and uh, the political program, restorations, directives, and decisions. Seven. It shall discuss and analyze all the documents, resolutions, reports, and decisions of the party. Yes. Now, that is the section. If, if your understanding of the section is that a section is an entry structure or an entry organ of the party, then it's wrong. Then it is wrong. <laughs> The section is not the, 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 the organ that is composed of newcomers to the party. No. How do you expect a newcomer to come and educate members of the party on the constitution? Do you understand what I'm saying? Do you understand what I'm saying? No. In window is here. I don't know how many ministers you have. How many parliamentarians? They should belong to the section. It is their responsibility to be in the section so that they can educate the membership of the party. So that they can explain the resolutions. Now you don't go and get somebody who just left PDM yesterday or left LPM the other day and you say these people are in the section. They won't have the capacity. It's not me saying so. It's this one. So it's simple logic. Simple logic that you need to have the gurus in that. In, in that. Yes, please. Uh, speaker. My question is. How many ministers as an ex elector at the Swapo Party school? How many ministers graduated from your school? Okay. If plenty. You know, uh, plenty. <laughs> many, 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 many people they don't understand the structure of the party. They are they, they don't understand. They don't know that the most important and the basic, <coughs> the, 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 what? No, I need to see. The core structure are here at the grassroots. Yes. 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 Are here at the section. Do you expect now somebody to come and teach? 
about the constitution that we, they believe in, never so. As I mentioned to you, I said these people, they, they, they don't belong to any structure. They must. But, but again... So that is the thing that you also, when yeah. you are there, teaching also the, 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 the bigger structure that they get themselves to understand that if we are not strong down here, yes. the house will collapse yes. if it's not built on the strong foundation, which is exception. Some yes. of the just will come to you. Thank you very much for coming to the yeah. We are not really against our procedures. We do understand the very well our procedures. And then you make it even the point clear you are now talking. How many ministers do we have at the end of this? How many business people well known in the Middle East? Those people, they don't have time to come and speak from the section level as our comrade relations area. As I'm talking here, <coughs> I'm even having more than 10 positions. But that doesn't mean that I wanted to have that position. I wanted my swap party. I'm there to educate my swap party. Look at them, the majority, they are young. If we couldn't be there, we in the Middle East, we are very, very much challenged when it comes to the structures. That's why we are doing it, because we are having reason why are we do that. We don't want our swap that the Middle East. It's only us. Therefore, we are really humble request that please, if you are doing that in the window east, we are really doing it according to our environment where we are. But that's why we keep it. We are strong enough. We can go ahead while we are still grooming them. But some of them now they are coming. If we group them, then say, okay. Take it over in this one and that one. But if I, I say, no, I'm no more going to women or whatever, the whole window is it will Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, uh, okay. Now, let's let's, let's uh, also what we say in line with what Comrade Amina uh, has said. Okay. In line with what it says. And I will say, first of all, maybe I'll pass the graph. But uh, you need to engage other district coordinators in commerce and change. So that you organize a workshop, a regional workshop, regional leadership workshop. <clears throat> because there's a disconnect in understanding how we end up electing people to central committee, Congress central committee, then they become ministers. There's a disconnect. There's a disconnect. People thrive on your ignorance of the Constitution. They thrive, they are happy because you are ignorant of your own Constitution. Because if you were not, and I'll tell you this, from your section to branch to district to regions, you are the people that are elected. That constitution is very clear. Who should go to Congress? It's very clear. Who should become a member of the Central Committee? It's very clear. The problem is, right now, if we were to have an election right here, with all these people around all of you, and we bring in two members of the Central Committee, two members of Parliament, or two members of six of them, six years. And then we have an election. Okay? They are standing to be members of the Central Committee. And six of you, two, four, six, you are standing 
to be also members of the central committee. The majority of you, and I bet you, the majority of you are going to vote for mm. current members of the central committee. Yeah. That's the reality. Okay. That is the reality. When you go to Congress, your Congress is not run by the Congress. If we have to be uh, the, the, the <laughs> very honest with, with each other. The Congress is run by the current members of the Central Committee. Yeah. Right? Now, who gives them the power? That's who gives them the power? You give them the power. The power is in you. The way that the way that Constitution is designed, it is in such a way that every five years, every five years from this group, we should have at least four to five members of the Central Committee. That's how that Constitution is designed. But in practice, because we do not understand our own Constitution, and because there are people that we have elected to positions, and they have taken this position to become imperators, okay? They have become imperators. You have to listen to them, not listen to the Constitution. And we have become now servants of individuals, and not servants of the party. We have become servants of individuals, and not servants of the party. The questions about whether they belong to this organ or that organ, it is very clear in the Constitution where it says, in your rights, if you read your rights, number five, of the right, uh, the right of a member. It says, one of your rights is to elect and be elected. To elect and be elected in positions of the party. Okay? Provided that, provided that, if you hold this position, and if you want to be elected to that position, relinquish this position and go there. You cannot be uh, a member of the Central Committee and then you want to be a section, uh, a section at the head of the section. It's not possible. You need to identify people from amongst yourselves how you are going to elect people into positions. That's provided in the Constitution. The problem is, and I would say, when you look at your rights, the rights of, of, of a member of the party, and I keep repeating this, and I don't know why people don't want to grasp it. Just take your constitution and look at the very first right that you have as a member of the party. The very first right. And every time I say this, people think that uh, I, am, I am maybe organizing a rebellion. No, it's not. Because it's not me talking. It's the constitution. It says a member of the social party has the right to demand, to demand, not to beg, not to demand the fulfillment of what is established in this constitution, as well as the implementation of resolutions, decisions, directives, and agreements. So it is your right. This right is given to you by the Constitution. It's not given to you by someone just because someone likes you. No. It's given to you by the Constitution because you are a member of the party. So it's your right. If you observe the things that you have observed and you think <coughs> it is not right, you have the right now. You have the right to demand that this Constitution is fulfilled. Right? So now, you can only do so, you can only do so if you understand the Constitution. 
if you understand the Constitution. That is why that is why I deliberately deliberately included mindset change in this short training. Mindset change. You need that. You need to change your mindset. The way you were looking at things, you need to change it. If you don't change your mindset, you are going to sit here and complain for the next five years and still have the same problems. <laughs> you see, the mindset that we have now is that we are more subservient to individuals than we are subservient to the Constitution. But the problem that we have is you think, you think and believe that you are too small, that you are too small to bring any change. And you ask yourself to say, uh, now who am I to change anything? You are everything to change everything. Everything to change everything. You know, if you want to know how powerful you are, you need to look at a mosquito. You need to look at a mosquito. You know how tiny is a mosquito? The day you are going to see a mosquito in your bedroom, do me a favor, close all the windows. Jump into your bed, try to move the bed sheet like this. And pray hard that the mosquito gets in. And when it gets in, close it in and sleep with that mosquito inside. And then in the morning, tell us, tell us how useless, powerless, hopeless the mosquito is. Because you won't sleep. You won't sleep. In some cases it won't bite you, but you'll be beating yourself. In order to beat the mosquito, you'll be beating yourself. It looks small, but it's very effective. You also think you are small, but you are a member of the party. And one thing you need to understand is, every member of the party, every, and I'm saying every, unless you're not a member of the party, every member of the party is equal before the world. You only confer certain status on other members to look after your interests. So it does not mean because you've conferred those powers to somebody, then the person is more powerful than you know. You can always withdraw the power. You can always withdraw the power. Right? So, mindset change. Let's look at this. There are three things we need to look at. First of all, you have a mind. Every human being has a mind. At least I believe so. You have a mind. The mind is that organ that helps, that helps to think. It helps you to think. And then you have a mentality. And then you have a mindset. It's three things. Now the mindset is something that you need, it's an attitude that you need to fix and change. It's the changing of the mentality. Changing of the mentality. When you get into the soccer party, as we discussed earlier on, when you become a member of the soccer party, you are presented with the aims and objectives of the party. With the aims and objectives of the party. Now, those will change your mentality 
Because this is not something that you are used to. It's not something that you are used to. It's something new. So you have to learn them. You learn them, after learning them, they become part of your culture. They become part of your culture. Yes. Swap of Namibia or whatever we had that time, and swap party, this transition. There's a belief in what you call negation of the negation. You know, some of you believe in death, some don't. I don't. Right? I believe in the negation. The simple thing that you take a piece of meat, we put a piece of meat here, right? Close all the windows and doors and everything in the city and observe. After a year or two, there will be some insects coming from that from that piece of meat. There will be some webs coming from that piece of meat. Now you start asking yourself, how do those insects get there? You are sitting here guarding. They didn't come from there, they didn't come from anywhere, they're sitting in and they are dead. And then there will be waves coming from us. Where are they coming from? You understand? So you need to sit and think. And think critically. So the mindset in the soccer part is such that you need to look at your instruments. Look at your instruments, look at your structures, and ask yourself, is this exactly what you want to see? Does it serve your purpose? Okay, there's one position we have all the secretary for that, whatever. We all have these positions. But there's one position, and that is what comes to what you say. What you say. We have all these glory things in, in, in the Constitution. Those things need to be managed by somebody. Who manages the social party structure? Who manages that? Who manages to see that the women council members do not become these ones? Who manages to see to it that the youth goes up to what year? The 35 or 45? 35. Yeah. Now, you have the youth up to 35. Hmm? Obviously, when you are 36, you can divert and get to the women council. What happens to him? What happens to him between the age of 36 and 59? What happens to him? He cannot be a member of uh, the Elders' Council. He cannot. So he is left standing there. Now, you have thousands of ex plan combatants. These people, they learned that constitution in and out. You cannot tell those people to go and join a section or a branch, particularly a, bl a branch or a district. They won't fit. But where do you keep this? These people in this camp, where do you keep them? Unfortunately, we don't think further than that. What we do is chop and change, chop and change, chop and change. 1969, 1970, there was a position that was adopted at the Tanga Congress. And that position was organizing secretary. Our current president was the first 
organizing secretary of the Swapo Party. Now, that position is basically aimed at making sure that the structures, the organs of the party are properly organized. We don't have it now. Correct? Right? In 1983, that position was changed and renamed Secretary for Mobilization and Orientation. You had, you still had the Secretary for Information, Publicity and all that, but you had a Secretary for mobilization and orientation. And the purpose for that position is to make sure that this person is going to organize the party structures. But we have discussed all these things and thrown them out. They are not there. We don't even have uh, the pioneers there anymore. We don't. But we are saying people are born in swap of homes. Okay? You see, politics, my dear sister, politics is not, uh, uh, it's not uh, something that you can uh, transfer or transmit to your child through blood or through whatever. History teaches us some of the most revolutionaries that we have, their children were the worst Makakunas ever. Okay? <laughs> and some of the worst Makakunas, their children are today ardent revolutionaries. So it's not transmitted by blood. It's not transmitted by blood. It is a voluntary. The Swapa Party, like any other party, is a voluntary organization. You get in because you feel you belong and you want to contribute to its growth. Right? Um, But even with the best intentions, even if you were to change your mindset now, even if you were to change your mindset and say, I am not going to leave by the Swap Party Constitution, don't do it only at your home. You need to put it in action. You see something is wrong and you only whisper. You know, this party was not established by cowards. It was not established by cowards. Because if it were, it wouldn't be where it is today. And it's not led by cowards. If it were, it would be dead by now. Right? So why should you become a coward when you see something is done which does not reflect your mirror, your mirror, your constitution? Why should you be shy? Why you that you are proud of and you see that the furniture is upside down? The bed is not met. In your car. In your car. So I said right from the beginning. The mirror. What the mirror shows you, that is you. But if it shows you something else, never. Don't run away. And talking about the mirror, let me tell you something, uh, a very short story about the mirror. The mirror and, 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 and uh, Tsumkwe, where my grandparents come from, come from Tsumkwe. 
That's where I come from. You know. One man in Tukwe, at some point in time, went hunting. Okay. Our son, brother, went hunting and he picked up a small piece of milk. How he landed there, we don't know. But he took it with him to his home. You know these small pondos. And uh, he looked at the mirror, and after looking at the mirror, he started crying. Then he hit the mirror somewhere. Every morning before he goes hunting, he picks up, takes out the mirror. He looks at it, he starts crying, and he puts it back. So the wife started observing all these characteristics. What is happening to my husband? Every time he picks up the thing, he looks at it, he cries. Why? That went on for about two weeks. And after two weeks, the wife picked up the mirror to see what is this thing that makes my, my husband cry all the time. So she looks at it. And she also started crying. And then she put it. She went to the mother and complained to the mother that uh, I think my husband is seeing somebody. So the mother-in-law took the mirror, looked at it, and she was more angry. She didn't cry. She was more angry. She said, how can he be going after such a, an ugly old person? Okay. So they reported the matter to, to the village council. The village chief and uh, the Indunas, whatever, they came together to resolve the issue. That the husband is cheating on, on the wife. So when the man was asked to tell, why are you cheating on your, on your wife? He says, this wife of mine, this is my Fanta, my Coca-Cola, my everything, I can't cheat on. So the mother-in-law was so upset, took the mirror to the village chief. Here, you know, look at this. Look at the person that is there. So the chief looks at the mirror, and after looking at the mirror, he cries. He started crying. The elders also took the mirror, and everybody was crying. Okay. Everybody was crying. And the reason is because none of them had seen a mirror before. So they did not know what they were looking at. When they looked there, the only face they could see is the face of their ancestors. They've never seen their own face in their life. They've seen the face of their ancestors, of their fathers, grandfathers, and all. So that's what they see. Right? So it's the same thing with the Constitution. That's why I keep saying, that is your mirror. That is your mirror. Know it, otherwise you'll be seeing spooks and things that you'll be saying, but this is my ancestor. No, it's not your ancestor. It's your own Constitution. Right? In order to make sure that you apply a new mindset, you need confidence. You need confidence to apply a new mindset. Where do you get that confidence from? From the Constitution. Because you can now be able to talk confidently because you use the Constitution. You don't say, hi, Charles Mubita said this. No. You say, but that's what the Constitution says. Anybody challenging you, you use the Constitution. You are confident that what you are saying is the correct thing. Right? You are confident. And then in order to make sure that you apply the correct mindset, you need to articulate the reality. 
Not falsehoods, not rumors, but the reality. The reality. Say things as they are. Um, let's look at critical thinking, because we need to think about these things critically. Now, critical thinking is not just thinking for the sake of thinking, no. It is reflective, reflective judgment. Reflective judgment. It's the thinking that should help you to open up things that are not open up. If you take a red apple and a green apple and you put them together there, what you see is an apple. But you'll be saying, the other one is red, the other one is green. Until you cut it open, it's when you understand that it's only the color that's outside that is different. On the inside, that they say. Do you understand? Do you understand? So, it's the same when you look at issues in the past. Don't look at the surface. Don't look at the surface. Look internally. When you take your car to a mechanic, what do they do? Is this thing they say diagnose the car. They rip it up. They open it up, they open the engine, so that they can find out what's the problem. So it's the same thing. Somebody comes and tells you something, and you think in your mind you have the answer, but you don't. You don't until you open up to understand what the problem is. Otherwise, you'll never understand the problem. You'll never understand the problem. Can I give you a small test? Ma'am, can I give everybody a small test? Yes. To test, to test your thinking skills. To test your thinking skills. Can I do that? Okay. Let's do this. Um, uh, Chief. But don't beat me. Huh? Yeah. Um, next question. Oh, very close. <laughs> yeah, now let's take it this way. This is husband and wife. Husband and wife. They are in a happy marriage. Very happy marriage. However, each one of them has one big weakness. One big weakness. His weakness, husband's weakness, is a champion of cowards. Coward. He's a coward, such a coward that if he's sitting, if he's standing, whatever, if he just hears anything, he'll run away. Just a little sound, run out. Okay. But it's something that is in him. That's how he was born. Now the wife, biggest problem mm -hmm. is that she talks in her sleep. <laughs> she talks in her sleep. And when she talks, it's not like, uh, you know, only this one will hear, no. She talks loudly, that even out there you can hear, you can hear her talking. Right? You can hear her talking. So now one day, um, 
You see those houses where the window is here, almost like that. The window is up from here. The bedroom, the window is from here to up. So the bed is next to the window, kind of chair. And they were sleeping, nicely sleeping. Their head was on his chest, lying on his Fast asleep. And then she starts dreaming and talking in her sleep. And then she takes her hand and hits him on the chest while talking. Boom! Run! My husband is coming. And he immediately jumps from bed and jumps through the window. He falls outside and breaks his arm. But after breaking his arm, he looks up, looks around and he says, but, but this is my house. <laughs> but this is my house. So now you have to go all the way to re-enter the house. Let's see, there are kids now still playing 2 o'clock a.m. There are kids still playing PlayStation. So yes, no. And the kids come and find out that daddy is in a painting. In, a <laughs> <laughs> in an underwear mask. <laughs> so he gets back in and finds her fast asleep. She's still talking in her sleep. Okay. Now he has a broken arm. <laughs> And he starts shaking here and he wakes up and looks up and says, Yeah, so you are cheating on me. What happened? Now she doesn't know what's, what's going on. So he realizes the story that this is what you said. And you see now my arm is broken, I jumped up. He said, But why do you jump up? You know that this is your house. So now I want to know from you. I want to know from you. Applying your own mind, not the mind that you came with here. Using a totally new mindset change and critical thinking. And these two come to you with this problem. They're on the verge of divorce. Who do you think is wrong between the two of them? Who do you think is wrong? Anybody? Yes. Nobody's wrong. Sorry? Nobody's wrong because of their weakness. Maybe they just need to wait for the problem. I don't say it. Yes? Yes? I think it's the husband. Hmm? Yeah. The husband. Because he's supposed to observe this before he can actually. Yeah. Okay. He wants to try from this side before he goes to the other side. Chief. It's not really both of them, but they should just turn their well doing things like. The way she sleeps and talking, to should change that or they should understand each other's weakness. Come back. The Can we make our 
Okay. I can only attend to the hearing because uh, I was distracted somehow on the part of the men. For the men, uh, having that weakness is something that can be unlearned. Uh, it, uh, it can visit a professional like a psychologist uh, to, to work on that weakness. <coughs> because some of these weaknesses can be adopted from uh, childhood, perhaps uh, an environment factor. And as a person is growing, uh, this is not a permanent thing. I believe it's something that can be worked on uh, through, as I mean, getting help from professional <coughs> psychologists. So, not entirely something that is permanent. It's not. I don't think it's something that is hereditary. I don't think it's genetic. Okay. Um, yeah. Yes. Thank you very much. For me, I think, uh, no one to be no one is wrong. The both of them. The husband is the what is 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 the coward. <laughs> the lady is the talkative one. Is sleeping. Really, what they need later on, whatever has happened, that's to set in How do you solve it? Well, you have to start it. These two are fighting, yeah? they are fighting, they are about to be You need to know who is wrong and how to do sort it. Yeah, this they say they went to see one of the experts. From there, it's really Yes. The husband is a coward, and the woman is a speaking woman while she's sleeping. When we think these things, there's nobody who's doing these things intentionally. They did it because. The woman, when God created, she took him. When the man is created, she's a coward. There's nobody who looks the coward to get the coward. And nobody who looks the speaking to come and speak. The question is... The, the question only is. thing to, yeah, they have to do is to come up. You are saying the husband does not do that intention. Did the wife dream intentionally about no, another man? Neither the wife <laughs> did not come up with the speaking intentionally. Just only maybe something disturbing. <laughs> something. But she can dream about another man without speaking. Yes, she can. Uh, you asked me the question unexpectedly here, but after analyzing the whole story, that the wife hit the husband, and what she was saying that my husband is coming. So, which means this husband has another girlfriend who is married somewhere, or another person's wife somewhere else, and then this woman also has another man somewhere else who comes when the husband is not there. So, in other words, they are all wrong. They just expose themselves, what they do behind the doors or without the other person. <sighs> okay, that's one two. All of them, they are around. Mm -hmm. um, why the wife is wrong? She knew that if she, she had the consciousness that she might be sleeping back on her husband, or the man who is not her husband, her consciousness is telling her that the reason she even. 
wake up. It's her consciousness that wakes up. Because the conscious will never die. Now the husband also is wrong. Because he, he reacted so fast, he couldn't think that he see where it is. But then knowing that, he always does that to sleep with other <laughs> wife <laughs> and husband. The reason he has to jump. Yeah. And maybe he's not even to spend the time to jump. That is what he's been doing. Every time he does my husband, he has to do that. The reason is not so easy for him to sleep. <laughs> To me, 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 no one is wrong. No one is wrong. Yes. And if, if, if they would, the, 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 this is really the situation where we live in. We assume, we are, we are too quickly to assume. When you hear something, you don't even investigate. You already believe that yes. Like how can somebody is dreaming and say, if you if you look at it, a woman will say, run, my husband is coming. You hear it, you already believe that yeah. And what is she doing? But in reality, nothing is it's not like that. Even this coward also. He is not he is not cheating. Only that he cannot hear something, he will just jump <laughs> and run. For me, when you hear run, my husband is coming and you are running, meaning you used to cheat me. But in reality, nothing, nothing of that sort. And these are most of the things that are happening between us. You believe you hear this for ITC because we are talking to the ITC person. You, you believe. Yeah, it belongs there because you, you, you even saw uh, talking to who, who and what. These are the things. And it's what is killing us, our 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 relationship and trust and comradeship because we are here calling other each other's names. It's exactly from that. Thank you. I wanted to close, but I see two hands. Let's close with the two hands. Yes. Okay. My my thing is that they both read. Um, okay. Spiritually, what you see, what is always on your mind, is what you dream of. Next. And consciously, what you do is what you will react on. So the man consciously reacted on what he usually do. And she dreamt of what she she also was uh, thinking of because she she even once tried to do that. What is in the back of her mind is what she dreamt. So that is assuming, you know, the assumption. What you assume is in your mind. What you what is in your mind, you will sleep dreaming it or sleep talking it. So. I think that a person who is dreaming doesn't really have control over what they dream. You can't choose to have a specific dream or a specific method. Furthermore, if you are someone who speaks in your sleep, then you also have no real control. It's just something that you do that your brain is wired to somehow, but it has nothing to do with your conscious inputs. Uh, the husband who jumps out of bed because he was startled. It's maybe also in his nature because, like you said, he's a coward. So in his, his nature kicked in and, and he, he, he had a fight-or-flight moment 
So he wasn't feeling away. It's like if a, if you're walking in the street and a dog comes chasing you, you will jump over the next wall that you see, and you you don't really have control over that, but you just do it because it's something that it's in your nature. So it's not to say that the husband or the wife are wrong, in my opinion. I think that <coughs> the wife you cannot assume that she has had a dream about having sexual relations with someone. It could have been anything. Because she, she said, what? Hurry, my husband is coming. Mm -hmm. So it could have been anything. It doesn't mean that she's necessarily cheating. The husband, like I said before, he got startled. And I think the best solution for both of them is to go and see a uh, problems during sleep. Mm -hmm. And who can help the husband with his cowardice problems? Mm -hmm. OK. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, let's do this. Let's do this. I don't know who. Who will help me? I'm not that good at singing. I need someone to help me to sing the following song. Vakwetuvaya. <coughs> Can we go? Vakwetuvaya. Naso atuhi. Koza dia, koza dia. Eh? Can we do that again? Ah, okay, good. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come <laughs> what they are going to do there, we don't know. We don't know. They are gone, so we follow. We follow. You know, it is all a mentality that we have. The first thing that came to your mind is the mentality. Not necessarily a changed mindset. Not necessarily a critical thinking of the situation. And this is what skin. You see, when you are in Zambia, you find just in, in, in town, you can't be there for an hour or two without seeing someone chasing another person. So you'll be saying, Kawala la pala, Kawala la thief. Now, the one who shouts the loudest, what happens is I steal something from him. And I start running, and she's chasing me, she says, Kawala, you know, pointing at me. Now, I'm running fast, and I start shouting also, loudly, Kawala, now, <laughs> and I'm running. But that's what we do in the party as well. I'll come back to that one. This is what we do in the party. You stand up from here, you leave from here, and you say, oh, this is what Mubita was saying, he was insulting this one, he was insulting. You are telling this person, this person tells that person that, and it goes on and on, and you don't even know now who is the Kawala. Everybody becomes the Kawala. This is what is destroying us. We are not applying to our mindset. The person who is telling you this, you don't sit and ask them and say, hey, what's going on? You know the reason why people didn't like him? Um, some people, not not, not people. Some people didn't like uh, uh, Comrade Pohamba for one reason. Because you go to Comrade Pohamba and say, Kawala, I saw this. So, which book is Kawala? No, Comrade uh, Toino. Oh, oh, it's a Kawala. Eh? Okay. Uh, <coughs> comrade, I want to go and drink some water. He goes to pretend to be drinking some water. Then he'll call Comrade Toino. Please, can you rush over here? Then you rush there and you get there, you see, you find me sitting with him, and then you are there, say, Oh, comrade, can you repeat what you said about me? <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. That is leadership. You want to know, it's, it is scary. At the end, you don't want to share anything. But it's better because you are not going to be sharing in any rubbish. This time around, you'll be sharing something that is that's of importance in this day. But this is what we do. Now, 
How many of you have dreamt? You know, and I always had dreams. You dream you are so rich. When you wake up, you are so poor. <laughs> huh? <laughs> Isn't it? You dream you are so rich, you are driving this type of car, even a car you have never seen in your life. Alright? So now we are going to be blaming this poor lady here of fantasizing about some other names. A man that even if you were to torture, she will not even recall the name of the person, <laughs> or even the face. It's a fantasy. It's a dream. It's not the reality. Okay. And as Comrade Toyne said, you need to put these people together to realize, first of all, to realize their shortcomings and acknowledge that. And acknowledge that. And we have a similar problem in the party. Amongst you as leaders, amongst you as leaders, there are some that are brilliant in speaking, but can't write. They are brilliant in speaking, but don't understand the Constitution. Their English is A. Number one. There are some that can't express themselves, but they understand the Constitution better. But how can they can't express themselves. So we need to, as leaders, try to recognize our shortcomings and our capabilities. And our capabilities. You don't send somebody to, to infantry. You know, we had a comrade Twake. Comrade Twake was a one very short guy from Cape Manso. Naturally, he, could, he, he cannot win. He can't win. He can't close one eye and leave the other one open. He couldn't. So, you are in military training, and the thing is, you cannot take that AK-47 or carbine or anything else without closing one eye so that you can look into You can't. You have to close one eye. Just try it one time. Just try it. Even now, when you're sitting, just try, try to stand a little bit. Or, or when you're sitting, just try to move a bit like this. Do this. Do this. Right. Do this. Look at, look at the finger. Directly, look at the finger where it is positioned, and then, then close your one. No matter the illusion, illusion of change of position, if you aim on it, you will have it. Yeah, if, if, no, 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 no. No, no, no. You will not. You will not. You see, the direction of this finger, if you do this, and it's just try to point this at, at a nose, with your open hand like this, do this, then close, close your, your one hand. You'll see a gap like this. So when you're going to shoot, you think you're going to be shooting that, 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 that nose. No, you're shooting somewhere else. <laughs> okay. so, so now, what happens is, uh, uh, the late corporate in Ambundunga, we uh, used to call him uh, Never Lost, the late corporate in Ambundunga thought he had a better idea and came with a bandage. The bandage and uh, this is some hazard called this other thing that you hold with. Yeah. So you know, put a bandage here and put but I mean, the eye is so closed. So this person is still the same. Okay? So we have to so need to recognize the weaknesses of other people and deploy them properly. Deploy them properly. You cannot have here the, the district mobilizer who cannot talk, cannot. You, know, you can't. So you need to recognize some of these weaknesses in our own people. Uh, 
<laughs> we had one comment also. Uh, I think you know the Shvagrula family. You, you know Daniel Shvagrula. Daniel Shvagrula was very good. He had a, one of the best voices ever. Very good voice for radio. But he couldn't read a single sentence. Even his own name. The minute you put him behind the microphone, he can't say his own name. He says, da, 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 da. But his voice was so sweet and nice. So you don't force things. Okay? Don't. Be open minded. Try to understand. You are a leader. You know the weaknesses of your own people. You know what they can do better and what they cannot do better. Alright? Let's discuss. Any questions so far? Before yeah, I, there's just Can something that I wanted yes. to. I remember when you were talking about the party ideology. There's a point where you mentioned when they changed the constitution in 90, I think 91, they removed the part of the socialism. And maybe I just wanted maybe some what okay. were the reasons and okay. and how do we how do we or how should we define the the party ideology as of now? Look, um, 1969, December to January 1970, the Tanga Congress aligned the Swapo Party to socialist countries, right? So our 1976 constitution had socialism as the ideology of the party. The 1983 constitution had scientific socialism as the ideology of the party. So when we got independence, 1991, we had to change our constitution. There were a number of things that we took out from the constitution. And these are very vital things. One of them was the, uh, we took out that scientific socialism thing, we left it blank, and then we adopted the motto of the party as an ideology. Solidarity, freedom, and justice as an ideology. And our Secretary General at that time, uh, after uh, Moses Powell and others, Shiryangi said the ideology of the party that we have now is not an ideology because it is a cocktail. Okay. Now for you, most of you who like drinking cocktails, you realize that when you drink a cocktail, you don't even know what you're drinking, banana or orange. It's a mix of everything else. Right? So you cannot call it as an ideology. Because then you have to seek and explain solidarity, then you explain social justice, then you explain freedom. That cannot be your ideology. Okay. 2018. When we were changing that constitution, for whatever reason, changing that constitution, <laughs> then we put there uh, socialism with Namibian characteristics. That's what's not in that constitution. However, however, you have a mixed economy system. Socialism. It's not a political ideology. Socialism is an economic system. <laughs> the opposite of socialism is capitalism. It's an economic system. It's not a political system. It's an economic system. Okay? Now, the problem that you have is you have people that are mixed, that are practicing 
mixed economy to become the proponents of socialism with Namibian characteristics. The question that came from there, from us, from the party school is that, first of all, you need to define, identify and define those characteristics. What are those characteristics? What are those Namibian characteristics? Are you talking about the characteristics of Namibia as in the social characteristics of our culture? Or are you talking about the characteristics as an economic characteristic? Because if it's an economic characteristic, you have a mixed economy. How then do you bring in socialism? If you are looking at it from a cultural point of view or from a social point of view, it's much easier to define. It's much easier to define, much easier to identify, and much easier to implement. Simply because, right now, the people that came from uh, Congo, Congo was uh, our military training camp in Central Africa. The people who came from Congo all the way to Lubash, they passed bombs. They went through other people's bombs. And they were welcomed. Otherwise, there was no way they were going to arrive in the world. There's no way. Our culture is that I come to your house, you will give me something to eat. You will give me water. That's our characteristics, isn't it? That's our characteristics. So now, if that becomes our ideology, then it means it's an all embracing characteristic that we need to look at. But is that our characteristic? If it is, then we should work towards that. Right? Communism started in Africa. Communism started in Africa. It's only that we didn't call it communism. We didn't call it communism. We all come from villages. In the villages we identify that those people are very good at hunting. One person will go and hunt and kill whatever they kill, they bring to the village, and that animal is shared and cooked. Men used to eat together, and we sit together and eat. Women would be sitting there. That, uh, that one would be in a place that would, would eat together here. And that's communism. It's all about it's communal Somebody who was good at hunting, the other one is good at cooking, but you combine all these things, you do them together. And this, that we lived in that kind of tradition. We lived in that kind of tradition. So if we are going to come up with characteristics, socialists with Namibian characteristics, we need to identify those characteristics. And I don't think we'll be able to identify them if we are going to use an economic model. If we are going to use an economic model, we'll not be able to get anything. But if we are going to use a social model based on that party constitution, then we'll get, we'll get some. Then we'll get some. But has that passed the Central Committee or still just in a discussion outside the, the, the party hmm. structures? Yeah. That discussion. What is happening is it's unfortunate that the, the party school is not uh, fully functioning as it should. Because our proposal was, this thing has to be thrown to the structures of the party. Everybody has to discuss, identify those characteristics first. Identify them so that you have a common understanding. So all the organs are supposed to have that. Once you have that, then you can go out and say, okay, fine. Now let's refine it. This is fine, this is understand. And that's our failure right now. Our failure is that 
something is decided at the central committee, where even the members of the central committee don't understand what they're, they've decided on. They don't understand. They don't. They don't understand. I'll give you a simple example. You know, after the 2019 uh, regional with the local authority, was it 2020? The regional, 2020. Yeah. the regional and local authority election. I, 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 I would just have been fired from, from the school. <laughs> I, I, was, I was on my way driving to, to Katina. I was listening on the radio. The police bureau meant there was a letter that came from the party written to our regional coordinators that they should get in touch with Intertima, with the independent candidates, with Nudo, uh, UDF I think also, mm -hmm. so that in those areas where we did not win the majority, we should cooperate and work together with these independent candidates with Nodo and with whatever. Okay? That will be better. I immediately phoned my boss, the lead director, or the deputy SG. I immediately called him. I said, Comrade, <laughs> is it true? This letter I'm hearing in the, on the radio and is uh, coming out of the newspapers. It was in the Namibian and other newspapers. Is it true? Then he said, Ah, I also read about it. Then I said, But don't you see anything wrong with it? But this is something that came from a very high A member of the party is guilty of misconduct. And I hope you understand what misconduct is. When you are guilty of misconduct, you can be. You can be expelled from it. You can be suspended from it. This one says a member of the party is guilty of misconduct if he or she supports, cooperates. Another political party or organization that is in competition. Before people say it's Charles Support another political party or organization in competition with the party and in a manner that is contrary to the aims, objectives, and policies of the party. Thank you. Now, you see, our people have this notion that simply because you sit in parliament with different parties, therefore, you can also sit in councils and cooperate. It's not the same thing. It is not the same thing. These people are campaigning against you. They are calling you names and everything else if at all they want to destroy it. I asked my boss, I said, but do you realize that all of you in, in that political bureau, if somebody was to read this to you, you would all be guilty of misconduct? Then you have to step back and say, wait, wait a minute. Which article is that? I said 16.5. Then he went and read it. Then he realized, he said, no, it's a big mistake. No, it's wrong. You understand? So, in closing, I would say what I said at the beginning. The Swapo Party is a rules-based organization 
And therefore, every member of the party should conduct themselves, behave in conformity with the rules, constitution of the Swamp Party. Thank you.